Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Atkinson. And I'm Kristen Johnson. Welcome to a program we're calling Major in a Great Life. They say that everyone has a story. You don't have to be famous to be interesting. And in this half hour, you're going to hear stories of six alums and friends of Wingate University, where they are today and how they got there, what they've learned along the way, and how they were able to major in a great life. First up is an alum responsible for making the fan experience special for more than a million people each year. And for this story, we headed to the mountains of East Tennessee, 200 miles from Wingate, to the town of Bristol, Tennessee, to the birthplace of country music and the fastest half mile in the world. Welcome to the last great Coliseum. Oh, oh my gosh. He's got the greatest job in the world if you're a race fan. Landon Owen, Wingate alum 2002. This is his office, Bristol Motor Speedway. Do you just pinch yourself in the morning when you come to work? Um, sometimes when you come in and you see it coming over the hill and it comes around and it gets you, sometimes your heart flutters a little bit. The heart palpitations you can excuse. There's no other place exactly like it on the planet. We're heading towards the start finish line and the flag stand. So imagine the guy waving the green flag and you've got 42 other guys chasing you. On a trip around the track, he showed us what makes it unique and why they use so many superlatives. The largest facility of its kind in the world. Largest enclosed amphitheater stadium at nearly 160,000 seats. Fourth largest sports venue in America, eighth largest in the world. And it really throws you back in your seat. You feel the G's. Bristol Motor Speedway is the fastest half mile in sports, and it's Landon's job to make sure it's filled on race day. He's the director of ticketing sales. There's just so many things that scream. This is tradition, so it's a wonderful place. The total is $30, ma'am. Landon manages a team of 30 people in the ticket and sales office, a group that doubles leading up to race time. He and his team are the race fans' first touch at Bristol. What kind of feedback are you getting? A job they take seriously. Bristol customer service is legendary. They call it the Bristol way. We may not necessarily see it you know, when someone comes here, but we can hear it in their voice and they can, they can hear the smiles on our face when we're talking to them. Um, so that's what really drives us on a daily basis when we're talking to 100 people a day. Owen earned his degree, a BS in sport management at Wingate and went on to get a master's at Marshall University in West Virginia. Worked there before landing jobs at Virginia Tech, Rutgers, the New York Mets, and now Bristol. So how many will you host a year? Uh, we have three major events every year. We have lots of little one-off shows, uh, but our main three are the spring and NASCAR, our spring and August NASCAR weekends, and we've got a June NHRA Thunder Valley Nationals. Which they host at Bristol Dragway, right next to the Speedway. For both venues, they'll host about one million guests a year. The economic impact on racing in East Tennessee, $600 million. And they're gearing up to get into the football business. Decades in the making, they're calling Battle at Bristol, a college football matchup featuring Virginia Tech and Tennessee, September 10th, 2016. So here's our football field. The infield they'll turn into a football field, and in the stands will be 160,000 screaming football fans. They'll set a world record. At age 34, Landon has found his dream job. What would he say to a young person who says, I could never do this? You can. You can do that. Um, just be prepared to work. He says it starts while you're in college. You can't teach a work ethic to someone. You either have it or you don't. And this is where you're going to learn it. So learn to work hard. Dedicate yourself to your studies. You know, build relationships with your professors. And get out there and market yourself. He has a great saying that I love. It's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. And Kristen, that is so important. You can be the most talented person in the world, but if nobody knows who you are, it's going to be very difficult for you. So connect with people. Get out there. Indeed, Jeff. He really is an inspiration. We had a lot of fun shooting that story. Switching gears now, we have another alum who's found the secret to success. Kim Williams joins me. Kim, who did you meet? Brad Baldwin. His job is helping other people get jobs. He's a senior technical recruiter at Experis Manpower Group in Charlotte, where he works mostly with high-level IT professionals. Recruiters at Experis ring the bell when they seal the deal, or rather, sign a contract with the new hire. Once the bell rings, co-workers cheer, and then their favorite song is played over loudspeakers. Brad likes Farrell's Happy and LL Cool J's I'm Bad. The team that I'm on is called the CORE team, which stands for Centers of Recruiting Excellence. So we really drill down on tough-to-find candidates for our companies that we support. They have large national accounts with well-known companies like Hewlett Packard, IBM, JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Dell. Brad remains humble in his role regardless of the success he maintains in working with huge accounts. And he keeps a balance between work and family, 
having been married to his wife, LaDonna, for 12 years. They have a 10-year-old daughter named Sarah who attends Hawk Ridge Elementary in Charlotte. Just like with work, um, you have schedules. You, you need to make sure you schedule family time to give yourself work life balance. In 1993, Brad's father passed away two weeks before Brad started at Wingate, but he didn't let the tragedy stop him. He was a very involved, go-getter type of student, playing football, cheering, serving as an RA, helping with phonathon, serving as a presidential ambassador, and becoming Wingate's first African-American senior class president. He continues to jump into whatever he is doing with both feet, including his career. Three characteristics that have helped him in his career came to mind. Can do attitudes. Money motivated, I have to be money motivated to be successful. And the other one I would say is relationship. You have to care about building relationships. And that probably would be the number one. As a human services major, finding jobs for people across the country seems to be a perfect fit for someone who knows how to build relationships. Experis employs more than 31,000 people and Brad recruits as far away as Seattle, Washington, Los Angeles to Arkansas, New York, Chicago, and locally in Charlotte. Most of his work is done by computer and phone, networking through social media like Facebook and LinkedIn, and posting to job boards like Monster and Career Builder. So basically, when I get a position, I will post the job on those boards, and the candidates actually will end up calling me or will email me. And that's really how you find the talent. Typically, within 48 to 72 hours, he will find a candidate for a job. Along with actual recruitment, he handles all human resources functions, including salary negotiation. He finds a lot of job satisfaction with the end result. Every day you have an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. And I'm excited about that every day. Um, there have been many occasions where I've called someone and they um, did not even know a job existed. And you know, through the process they got a job and you, you hear their tears on the other end of the phone saying thank you Brad for helping me find this opportunity. Um, you really made a difference in my life and for my family and those are those are good moments. His job as a recruiter is very competitive and can be stressful. One way he de-stresses is by playing ping pong at work with co-workers. Nice perk at Experis. After playing, Brad offers a few words of advice. Wingate is not just about the great buildings, um, the great facilities, um, the swimming pools that they didn't even have when I was going there. Wingate is about the people that you meet, the friends you meet, the relationship that you're going to build. Brad is very genuine and certainly loves his alma mater. He even made sure to wear blue and gold for the interview. Great to know even as an exec he didn't lose that school spirit. Thanks, Kim. Now we turn to a man who, like a lot of people, was the first person from his immediate family to attend a four-year university. Jeff Knoll grew up in Union County and received a trustee scholarship to Wingate University. The 1984 graduate says education has always been important to him, so much so that he has logged 30 years in the field. I met Knoll at Charlotte Latin School where he is the assistant head of upper school at Charlotte Latin and a math teacher. Why education? What interested you about the education um, field? For me, it was just uh, the relationship part. Like I always had a great relationship with my teachers in high school, you know, and even elementary school, all, middle school, all that. But even in college, like it just felt right. You know, I had a, a, an interest in mathematics and so I could, you know, play with that a little bit and teach math and but I also felt like getting to know students and that relationship I had with my professors maybe offering a piece of that to someone that was pretty exciting that 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 idea was always one that I felt like I could accomplish and would enjoy accomplishing talk to me a little bit about your Wingate experience why Wingate it was partly the location. I grew up in Union County, and so it was close. And so being the first one to jump out, I didn't jump far. But it was also it was a little bit about finances. And it was a little bit about trying to piece together some of that. So um, describe your day kind of from beginning to end. What, um, what's the first thing normally that you do when you, um, when you get in? I get in about 7.30. School day starts a little after 8. Um, I spend probably 30 minutes in the morning making sure the buses and the students are in, you know, where they need to be. Um, and that everything starts off pretty well. I, um, I spend, you know, I, I do teach class, but I spend the vast majority of my day uh, talking to students. Um, sometimes they need um, 
some guidance that maybe they weren't looking for uh, <laughs> earlier in the day. To put it nicely. To put it nicely. <laughs> um, but often it's just, you know, I'm answering questions that students have about procedures. I'm answering questions that parents might have about courses. I deal a lot with um, teachers and teacher education, teacher development on campus, you know, after teaching for a while, you know, that's part of my task is just um, trying to help the teachers along. I, d I do have a big part in uh, just making sure the day works the way it should. What are three personality traits um, that you think someone should have if they um, were thinking about this, this type of role? I think it's important to have a sense of humor. I think it's important to um, appreciate and to work hard on the relationships. And frankly, I think it's very important to continue to learn. What advice would you give to someone looking to come into this career? You kind of touched on a little bit with, I feel like with, you know, what are the personality traits, but um, just some good advice if somebody's coming into Wingate, first generation, looking to go into education, because maybe they've had a really good experience with education, or maybe they have not, and they want to um, feel like they can make a, a difference. There are lots of places to do a lot of great work, um, but uh, providing, helping to provide, helping someone along with their education, it, it's a pretty good calling. And, um, and so if you feel like that you have a place in your heart for that, I would tell you to pursue it. Um, you know, you can read in the paper every day some of the shortcomings and, and um, you know, maybe you have different wishes for yourself as far as, um, you know, way of life and economically and those kind of things. It is what it is. But the reward, you know, that's why I've had 30 good years is because it's, it has allowed me to share in so many people's lives. and and. Um, if you think you want to do that, uh, it'd be a hard thing to think about regretting, you know, 30 years if you didn't give it a shot. Noel also heads up a service project called Club Sandwich. For the last several years, students meet once a month and prepare and deliver hundreds of sandwiches to Urban Ministries in Charlotte. Jeff's service is one of the important tenants of Wingate University. Indeed, it is part of our motto. For our next story, we profile another educator, a former faculty member here at Wingate. For that, we go now to Brian Stevenson, who's standing by in the academic quadrangle. Jeff and Kristen, Dr. Elaine Jenkins is not a Wingate University alum, but she has very strong ties to Wingate University through her service as a member of the Board of Trustees and her current role on the Board of Visitors. She is a lifelong educator impacting the lives of thousands of students in Gaston and Lincoln counties. And now this educator is sharing her knowledge with people who are thinking about going into the field of education. The book was dedicated to Betty Clagg and Elaine Jenkins and I was so blown away to be remembered in from junior high history. Dr. Elaine Jenkins obviously made an impact on this student and no doubt many others as she devoted her life's work to public education. I started out teaching eighth grade history, the age of discovery through the Civil War. I taught American history and I loved it. I loved it. And so I, I taught for seven years, then decided that I was really interested in administration so I got a master's degree and was an assistant principal at Ashbrook High School for four years. Then I went to Holbrook Junior High School as principal where I spent eight fantastic years. Went back to Ashbrook as principal for three years. Was promoted into the central office. And I completed in there an EDS and decided to work on my doctorate and got an opportunity to go to Lincoln County which I did and went first as their uh, high school director and then became associate superintendent for curriculum and instruction. So that's how I got to Lincoln County. She even went a step higher, serving two stints as the interim superintendent for Lincoln County Schools. Even then, she was still learning. The thing about administration that was fascinating to me was putting together the very best school where kids could go to school and teachers could teach. and. One of the things that I loved about being an, an, an administrator at a school level was hiring great teachers. Dr. Jenkins' success in the field of education speaks for itself, and she has some very good advice for anyone thinking about going into education 
as a career. One of the things that people don't think about in teaching is the physical energy that you need to be good at it. Good teachers don't sit down. Good administrators don't sit down. You are on your feet all the time. And I think when I was young and thinking about it, and you know, um, I never realized the physicality of teaching. You really need to be in good shape. You know, you really need to take good care of yourself. And, um, and at the end of the day, I was exhausted. But you know, it's a good feeling to be tired and to feel like you've gotten something done. In addition to the energy and fun of teaching, there are the downsides. What became more difficult in education was just the amount of paperwork that's necessary to complete all the tasks that, there, that you know teachers have that sometimes takes you away from the teaching task. And we might as well be honest, that's part of it. Finally, Dr. Jenkins' love of Wingate University has helped her guide and prepare students to major in a great life. Wingate has changed me as an administrator, and that is when you hear youngsters talk about what coming to Wingate University meant to them, you know, it helps you put in your own mind the kinds of preparation that needs to take place before they ever get to the university. And I'll tell you, I've been so impressed with the youngsters who have talked about their experience. You know that a hardworking person like Dr. Jenkins doesn't simply retire and sit on the sidelines. She tells me that she is spending her life now giving back. She serves on the board of United Way in Lincoln County, also the board at the hospital, and she is a member of a organization that helps teachers, Delta Kappa Gamma. Thanks, Brian. Kristen? Our next alum takes us to the heart of Charlotte in Uptown. Dawn McCabe sat down with me in the new Ramir Bearden Park to tell me what it's like to work for one of the largest banks in the center city. The 2001 graduate says banking was never something she considered until the opportunity came along. After years of hard work, she is now a VP Asset Manager. Um, I was always a very social person and enjoyed interacting with people, so I just never considered banking or finance since math wasn't really my thing. And uh, after graduating from school and sitting at home and sending resumes, a friend of mine said a father was um, working at the bank and had an opening and that I should consider it. And um, 12 years later, I am still at the bank. So walk me through a day when you first get into the office to the time that you leave. Walk me through how, how that goes for, for your job. Yeah, for, I, I think for most people in corporate America, it's email intensive. You're battling hundreds of emails a day and answering them as quickly as you can. Uh, in my particular role, I also spend a lot of time on the, on the telephone working with clients. Um, and a lot of the position is asset management related. And so I'm constantly maintaining that relationship with our, our third party clients uh, in order to seek new business and maintain the business we currently have. What would you say are the top three qualities of um, top performers in your industry? Ambitious, organized, and a uh, strong communicator. What's one thing that has surprised you about the banking industry? I think the biggest surprise as, as a naive student coming out of college was that everyone worked at the general bank which meant that they processed over-the-counter deposits and payments and mortgage payments and, and things that what we call the general bank would do and that I never really thought and probably because I wasn't geared towards, you know, I didn't focus my um, Wingate career on finance, um, that there was this whole other side of the bank that has so many more opportunities than just a general bank. Talk a little bit about what advice you would give to college students who, like yourself, they may not even be thinking about the banking industry, but then they end up in it. So talk a little bit um, about some advice that you would maybe give, some, give students. Yeah, I think if you just keep that ambitious mentality that you can do it, and there may be a learning curve, but that was exactly what I think sold them on my interview. When they asked me if I knew commercial real estate and, and what my experience was, and I said, I don't have any, but I can learn. And I think that's just something that you need to really believe in yourself, that most of these positions can be learned. So if you're willing to work hard and put in the time, 
you can succeed. How do you think that Wingate as a smaller school um, helped you kind of thrive in the corporate environment? It was honestly the only option for me. I am not a strong student. And so going to a big school, I feel that I would have been overwhelmed and, and probably wouldn't have been successful. So during my college search, I just knew I needed to find something small where I could get one-on-one -on -one contact with teachers, uh, professors, and just faculty and staff. And it allowed me to grow my personality and to develop relationships that I otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity. And it was because of those relationships that I ended up where I am today. Dawn grew up in New York but knew she wanted to come south for school. She tells me she found Wingate after searching small North Carolina schools, Jeff, and she wanted to have the opportunity to play volleyball. She advanced very quickly, didn't Indeed. she? For our final story, this next subject ended up at Wingate. It was Wingate College back then. Almost by accident, he got an opportunity his senior year in high school to get out of school for the day. He came here for a visit and immediately fell in love with the place, a love that's lasted more than three decades. Some people know exactly what they want to do in life. Ken Yelton of Concord knew what he didn't want to do, get into banking. He'd heard horror stories from his brother-in-law, a banker. Where does Yelton work? You guessed it. <laughs> and it's interesting how, you know, some 30 plus two or three years later, that's my entire career has been in banking. He went to Wingate College in the 80s, studied business administration, economics. It was during an on-campus interview, a job fair, that Yelton got hired by a large regional bank found he enjoyed it, and the rest is history. Though he deals in dollars and cents, he's found the secret to being a successful banker. It's about people. You know, banking is a, it's number crunching and, you know, data and all of those sorts of things, but fundamentally it's a, it's a people business. It's about developing relationships, developing and earning people's trust, he says. As an executive vice president with Uari Bank, an Albemarle-based community bank covering Stanley, Cabarrus, and Anson counties, Yelton spends his time on the phone, around the board table, and in the community with customers. He's in business development and commercial lending. How did Wingate prepare him? I gained self-confidence, um, a larger uh, vision of the world, if you will, understanding uh, that the world doesn't revolve around me or any other one individual, that there's a lot, a lot more important things than yourself and uh, being able to communicate effectively uh, I think is one of the and work together with other people was real important to uh, to me and one of the things I got from my four years at Wingate. There's no doubt where he went to school. His office is filled with Wingate stuff. There's the glass bowl, the coaster, and the plaque. The big picture on the wall of money is interesting. Currency from around the world, a gift from his kids. Their dad loves to travel a passion he developed at Wingate during a London trip in 1983 in a college's study abroad program. North Carolina has so many great colleges and universities, he says. One stands out. I'm a big advocate for Wingate, and I'll, it, it is a combination of, of what I feel it has done for me and the fact that um, while we have all these great choices that can give a student a great education and equip them very well for the future, I think Wingate has um, a unique opportunity to change people, to really fundamentally change people. Powerful words and a lifetime of making important decisions. Coming here, Ken Yelton told us, was one of the best decisions that he ever made. As it has been for so many people, Jeff. Our thanks to all the alums and friends for sharing their stories. And thank you for watching. I'm Kristen Johnson. And I'm Jeff Atkinson. We'll see you next time.